were the way. Amen. I, I, you know, y'all know I have a song. Amen. Amen. It was on my heart. It's a simple song. Bread of life. Uh oh. Sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth. A holy king. A comforter. You are the living God. That's all I want to say. Awesome ruler. Yes, awesome ruler. Yes, Lord. Gentle redeemer. God with us, a living truth. And what a friend we have in you. You are the living word. Jesus, Jesus, yes. that's what we call you. A manger born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living word. Amen. Amen. I right, thank God for Jesus. Amen. Yes. You are the living word. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You are the living word. Amen. Amen. You are the living word. What do you believe? What do you believe about your God? What do you believe about your God? I'm preparing myself because we are in the times that people need to ask themselves this question. What do you believe about your God? Not what do you believe about God? Mm-hmm. I, I, I will always remind you all, and I'll continue to share this until the good Lord calls me home. We all do not serve the same God. We need to understand that. No matter how close we think that our friends and family are and people that we like are, we all do not serve the same God. So the question is, what do you believe about your God? Amen. What do you believe about your God? Amen. And, and that's a good question that I like to ask because it, it, it makes a difference. It, it makes a difference about what you believe about your God. Amen. Amen. Um, let's go before the Lord this morning and, and just, just talk to him and allow him to talk to us. Amen. Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, your love, your peace, your protection and your provision. We thank you right now for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the testimonies that have gone before us, Lord God, about your goodness and your mercy, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, for, Father God, being, Father God, who you are, Lord God. A, a battle axe in a time of battle, a strong tower, Lord God. Our refuge, Father God. Father God, we thank you for being our help and our strength, Lord God. We honor you, Lord God. We know that you are the God that created, Father God, everything that we see and all that we experience that is good in your sight, Father God. We honor you and we glorify you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for creating man in his own in your own image, in his likeness. We thank you, Lord God, for putting man to sleep and out of his rib you brought forth Eve, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you, Father God, allowed them to, Father God, show what marriage is supposed to look like, Father God, in your presence, Father God. We, Father God, thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done, all the leaders and all the prophets and all the judges and all the kings, Father God, that you, Father God, called to, Father God, Tell your people, Lord God, that you are a God that, that commands, Lord God, not only obedience, Father God, but love, Father God. For your word says we should love the Lord God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, and all our strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We thank you, Father God, for the coming of the Messiah, your promised son, your only begotten son that you sent, Father God. In the form, Father God, of a, of a fleshly baby, Lord God, born by a virgin mother by the name of Mary, who was espoused to Joseph. We thank you, Lord God, for the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that, that led him, that birthed him, that allowed him, Lord God, to live a life, Lord God, a, a, a perfect life, Lord God. Even though he was in the flesh, he did not give in to the, to the calls and the cries and the, and, the, and the sin of the flesh. He continued, Lord God, to be obedient unto you. Father God, even in persecution, Lord God, suffering, Lord God, even on the cross, Father God, he was obedient, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for his obedience, Lord God, for you empowered him, Lord God, when he fell asleep, Lord, gave him power, Lord God, from on high, Lord God, raised him up, Lord God, with all power. Yes, Lord. 
Yeah. After he defeated sin, death, and the grave, we believe and affirm, Lord God, that he was seen by his disciples, Lord God. We affirm and believe, Lord God, that those that have confessed their sins, Lord God, and believe, Father God, that he is the son of the living God, by faith, our children are adopted in, Lord God, and have received the promise of the Holy Spirit, which we are sealed, Lord God, until he returns, and he's coming back. But until then, Lord God, we affirm and believe that we will stand for you. We will ask you, Lord God, to empower us, to remind us, Lord God, that we are light in this darkened world. And that this new life that we have in Christ Jesus is not based upon our flesh. For your word says that man looks at the outward, but you look at the heart. Yes, sir. So we dispel all the lies of the enemy that cause us to make us believe that we can identify our brothers and sisters within the natural. But we know it's by the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that we are brothers and sisters, truly brothers and sisters in Christ. So we honor you, we glorify you, and we thank you, Lord God, for today. And what you're going to do in this hour. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. 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 God is good and we are ready. Amen. To hear a word from the Lord. Amen. 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 I believe that everyone under the sound of my voice are accustomed to locking all their doors and setting their alarms and every night before they go to bed. Amen. Many of us uh, make sure that our children are wearing the seatbelts before we take off and and, and most of us, when we go shopping, we make sure all of our valuables are out of plain sight. Or we have them strapped around us so close and so tight that we can't breathe. Amen. And we, we do these things because we believe that this will bring about some safety or make us feel safe in our environment. Contrary to what some people may believe and promote. That evilness that is running rampant all over this world and this nation is not and does not originate from a certain race of people unless we are talking about the human race right. see when evil rears its ugly head and the effects of the spirit will cause many of us to feel frightened and paralyzed and always on edge i heard someone say when the spirit of evilness and fear shows up peace leaves the building hmm. why is that well it's because we have placed all of our hopes and our dreams, all of our securities and our protections in the hands of mankind Amen. and not in God the Father. As I mentioned earlier, evilness and fear, these are spirits. Yes. This, this is a spirit. This is not flesh. We will not be able to defeat the spirit of fear or overcome the evilness in the world within our own strength. We won't be able to defeat the spirit of fear and, 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 and the spirit of, of, of defeat and, 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 and of fear in our own intellect. We will not be able to defeat this spirit of fear and evilness in the legislation or judicial branches either. Come on now. No matter how many laws are passed, All right. people of God, we will not be able to defeat this evilness and this spirit of fear. So what can we do? What should we do? Where can we go and who should we run to when evilness and chaos and fear comes upon us like a mighty flood? I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Turn with me to the book of Psalms 46. We're still dealing with the topic of a series, I should say, about hope. Last week, we asked the question, is hope what? Worth waiting for? Amen. Is hope worth waiting for? That was last week, but this week I want to still stay in a series of hope because we're in a time right now as the people of God where we are we should be looking for hope all right where we, we should be looking for hope we we should already know where hope lies Amen. and so this series about hope is just to remind the people of God where your hope and your help should come from Amen. in the book of Psalms chapter 46 numbers 1 through 11 please stand in reverence to God's holy word when we talked about the spirit of evilness and the spirit of fear, what happens when it shows up in the, in the house of God and the people of God? What happens? Do we respond as the world responds? No, 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 no. Not, not what the psalmist is saying. And I like number one. Psalm 46, verse one says what? God is our refuge. That's right. Amen. And strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though the waters roar and the foam and the mountains quit with their surging. Says there is a river 
whose stream makes glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. It says God is within her, and she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Look what it says in verse 6. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shudders the spear. He burns the shield with fire. He says, very popular text, right? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen? Amen. We can read verse 11 if you want to. I know it's only one verse left. It says, the Lord host is with us. Mm -hmm. The God of Jacob is our what? Refuse. But for this morning, you may be seated in the presence of the most holy God and his heavenly host. This morning, we're going to be dealing with Psalms 46, Numbers 1 through 10. Amen. Amen. But I wanted to read 11 just in case someone said he forgot 11. Mm. This morning, we talked about the series. We're dealing with the series of hope. We're talking about hope. And the message this morning is entitled, There is Hope in a Safe Place. There is hope in a safe place. Now, a safe place is where you feel comfortable expressing and recognizing your wants, your needs, and your desires. But determining the location of your safe place is entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. A safe place has many purposes. But most importantly, it's a place where you can go to escape from the chaos and the cruelty of this world. Pastor, what made you bring about this message this morning? I had a conversation this week with one of my sisters who I love dearly. And the storms of life was, was coming against her and the personal things that was happening within her life. And I shared this with my my wife, about how we can prepare a word for, for God. We're always supposed to be prepared, all the servant leaders of God. We just don't pull things out of our back pocket. God does not work like that. But, but he allowed me to encounter this person, and this person was saying that, 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 that they don't even feel safe at home. And I was driving to, to the church, and after I had this conversation, thank you, Holy Spirit, somebody just shouted. Uh, they don't feel safe at home either, but there's hope today. And so I was driving to church and going down Elms Road, we know that there's a fire department yes. right next to the, the church. And, 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 and at the fire department, there's a sign, a yellow and black sign mm -hmm. that, that they post on these places where these uh, people that rescue lives and help people out. The first responders, is the, 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 I like to call them. And on that sign, in, on the right side of the fireplace, it said, Safe Place. Amen. And I drove past it and I thought about that. I said to myself, Mark, what is it about that place? Or what's going on in that place? That makes the leader of that place place a sign, safe place on the outdoor. Because because it, it didn't say safe place for this person, that person. It just said safe place. So if I'm in danger, Amen. or if something has happened to me in my life that's causing a threat or harm upon my life, because of what the sign says, I should be able to freely go into this place and feel safe. And God says, if the world got it, uh, what about my church? Uh, the, the world has it. The, the world says uh, on their buildings they have a safe place. And they're saying this place is available. And I thank God for uh, the people of God and the first responders and all those people that take care of people that are in harm's way, that need a safe place. But, but that's not what this message is about. We need to understand that the world has their description of a safe place. But we know that the world chooses whom they will allow in their safe place. But God doesn't. 
And God says uh, that this is a place where you're able to be at peace in God's safe place. And you're able to feel at peace, you're able to feel protected, and you're able to experience love and be inspired. That's what a safe place is supposed to be. How many of y'all have ever craved for a safe place? Amen. This is also a place where you are able to rest your weary mind, your body, your soul. Having a safe place establishes comfort, it builds hope, and it also gives you confidence. A safe place. The picture has already been painted. I can tell by the nods of your head. So let's go into the scripture. Psalm 46, verse 1, or number 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Now, this first verse does not need to be interpreted or just memorized. This first verse here needs to be trusted. Amen. That God is our refuge and our strength. Yes. This first verse needs to be believed in by the people of God. That God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. This verse needs to be counted on and made the center of our lives. That what? God is our refuge and strength. It says, an ever-present help in trouble. Why? Because our God is all-powerful. He's all-holy. All wise and all loving. God is our refuge and strength whether we realize it or not. And the scripture says here, an ever-present help in trouble. What kind of trouble are you facing right now? What, what, what kind of trouble? Are you facing some trouble that's dealing with the inward man? Or are you facing some trouble with the outward man? In the physical or the spiritual? What, what trouble are you facing right now? There's no problem whether emotional, physical, or spiritual is too big for our God. You know why? Because God is our refuge and our strength, our very present help, our right now God, our right now help. If we learn as the people of God to take refuge in Him and lean on Him alone for strength, then just like the psalmist who wrote this, we can face the most extreme crises with confidence. Because God is with us, and God is enough. The psalmist makes it clear. He says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. You see, trials and tribulations, persecution and suffering does not discriminate. Amen. It happens to all people. Amen. The fact that God is our refuge and strength does not mean that the children of God are not immune from troubles and problems. If that was the case, the writer never would have wrote this. Amen. The writer was in trouble. I know you say we have this, this, this everlasting life, the abundant life, but the abundant life that is afforded to those who believe, confess, and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is not a trouble-free life. It's not trouble-free. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9 says it like this. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, yet not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, the writer says, but not destroyed. That should let you know that the life of a believer, a child of God, is not a trouble-free life. We are not exempt from the storms of life nor the attacks of the devil, spiritual or physical. We need to be clear. And the reason why I'm taking my time with this one because we as the people of God need to be clear on this because false teachers and false preachers today claim that it is God's will for everyone to be prosperous and be in perfect health. Mm -hmm. They teach that since Jesus has promised to answer the prayer of faith, all that stands between you and material prosperity and physical health is your lack of faith. In layman terms, they say, you name it, you claim it, you claim it, and you name it. And it's going to happen for you. But when, not if, trouble strikes. God is sufficient to see us through. Amen. So whatever personal catastrophe we face, a major health problem, the death of a loved one, a loss of job, a nation in turmoil, emotional problems, conflicts, 
Whatever we're facing right now as the people of God, we need to remember that God is bigger than our problems. And he is readily available. God is pleading right now as he's speaking through the Spirit of God right now saying, guess what? People of God, take refuge in me and depend on my strength. Verses 2 and 3 say, therefore we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and the foam and the mountains quake with their surging. The writer is saying, first of all, I need to remind myself that God is my refuge and my strength. People of God, we need to say that every day, every second, every minute, every hour, that God is my refuge and my strength. And guess what he said? He is a present help, a very present help in a time of trouble. So, so the psalmist had to remind himself who God is in his life. And look, look how he starts bold. Look what happens in verse 2 and 3. He says, he says, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and the foams and the mountains quest from, with their surging, he says, look, even in the midst of all this chaos, I must realize as God's child that guess what? God is my refuge. God is my strength. A very present help in time of trouble. In other words, there are no physical guarantees, y'all, in this world. Amen. There are no physical guarantees in this world about anything or anyone. As often as the weather changes, so can our fortunes in life. Amen. When everything around us begins to shake and crumble and fall, and when the enemy begins to bring out murder and threats and begin to plan his attacks, no matter how threatening and loud the attacks seem and get, there will be no match for the power of God. Why? Isaiah 59, 18, and 19 says it like this. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay. Fury to his adversaries. Recompense to his enemies. The coastlands he will fully repay. So shall they fear. The name of the Lord from the rest, west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. Look what he says. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Therefore, I will not fear, for I know God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Verse 4 says, there is a river whose stream may glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high dwells. That should let you know something right there, that God does not dwell in any place. That the God we serve just don't dwell in any city. Amen. That the God we serve just don't dwell amongst any type of people. Amen. The writer understood that there's a river. This verse is speaking of a river that brings perfect peace to the people of God. Amen. This river that he's talking about, it brings, it brings perfect peace. Even in the midst of chaos, this river that the psalmist is talking about brings you perfect peace in the midst of turmoil and chaos. This is the water spoken of by Jesus to the woman at the well. Y'all remember the story? Amen. She said, give me some of this water that you talked about. But the, but the woman at the well had a, had a problem. I'm not going to call out that she was an adulterer. She was just a sinner. Amen. And just like you and I were. And God told her, give me, a, give me something to drink. And she said, you don't even have anything to draw from. Amen. And God says, if you would have gave me some of that water that is only going to be temporal, I'd give you some living water. Amen. And the psalmist was talking about that this living water, which is the Holy Spirit of God and the Word of God that rises up in the people of God, even when it's dry and distraught in the, in the world, we should have a living water with that side of us that will refresh us and revive us and restore us even when things seem out of control. The city of God is the habitation of God. All the blessings and provisions of the city of God comes because of what? God is in the house. So when God is in the house, there is no need for me to fear or worry about Am I going to have enough? Because when God is in the house, 
when the presence of God is in the house, all of my needs are already met. I just need to be reminded that God is our refuge, our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Let's talk about the city he talked about. He said in verse 4, the city of God. This city is so established because God shall help her. When everything else feels like it's impossible to enjoy, when Satan threatens to undo us and rob us of all joy, we can raise our eyes and realize that we are in the city of God, our safe place. He is with us. He's in his house. I don't have to usher him in. He's already here. And one day, on that great day, we'll be with him face to face in the new heavens and the new earth. People of God, I just need to let you all know that this is not the end. This is just a stop off, I should say. This world is not the end. We should know that. We should believe that. He says it like this. He says, though the earth give way and, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and the fall and the foul mountains quake and all the surgeries, he said, there's a river. <laughs> In the midst of all the chaos and things going on, there's still a river that God has given unto his people that will give them the relief, that will quench their thirst. Verse 5 says, In this city, God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. The her in this verse is the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ, the church, the true church. Not, 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 the, not the mortar, not the bricks, not the aluminum, not the furniture. The true church. And when God is in this true church, the spirit of church, guess what? She cannot be moved. The world may be falling down all around her, but the church will not fall. Why? Because God is what? Within her. Don't you know that there is no one, no people, no nation, no country more powerful than the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God of Mark Jordan. Amen. And the God of the city. Amen. That there is no, 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 nothing you need to fear. So we realize that this is just a holy place, a temporary place for us. It says the church will not be, will not fall, and I'm not referring to the building people of God. Amen. I'm talking about the people. Now, not the building, because I can recall that Jesus walked with his disciples and they were talking about how big the, the buildings were. Lord Jesus, look at all these. Big, beautiful buildings and all these nice stained glass windows and all these big things and all these things. And Jesus said, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm paraphrasing. So all this stuff is going to be crumbling when, when, when they, when they, when they, on that great day. All this is going to fall. Don't be putting your hope in all these buildings and stuff like that. He said, that, that, that's not important. That, that, that's not, don't get caught up on the building. He said, because that's not the church. He said, the river, this living river, this river whose stream may go out to see if God, it's not the building, but it's the people. So we are the church. Pastor Mark, what are you saying? Well, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells where? In you. In you. So even if the building keep me out, the Spirit of God tells me, guess what? I am the church. But he says it like this, when I do open the doors yeah. of the building, mm -hmm. forsake not thyself the assembly. Why? Because someone needs to know about this river too. Right. Someone needs to be encouraged and reminded right now, right now in the times that we're in, people of God, we assemble together because somebody needs to know that God is our refuge, Amen. our strength. Somebody needs to know that and they won't find it out or get to know it if we don't assemble. Amen. Someone needs to be encouraged. I told you, my friend says, I don't feel safe. Don't you know that many believers now don't feel safe? 
We as a people of God need to remind them that God is our refuge, our strength, our present help in the time of trouble. Remember, I said the true church is the people and not the building. Pastor Mark, what else, whatever, whatever, whatever sign, whatever, whatever, what else can we say? What else can we prove that we are the difference between the child of God and the people of the world? And you say all the time that we all don't serve the same God, but 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 but, but can you back that up? Okay, okay, I, I hear you. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Because, because, because in the times of chaos and in the times of confusion and in the times of what we're going through as a nation of people, people are going to use the name God to get you to support their cause. But God said, you got to be careful. Because I don't look like the, as man look. I don't look at the outward. He says, I look at the heart. Romans 8 verse 14 through 17 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Look what he says. Verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out what? Abba Father. 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 And we know this all the time. This is running red in the scripture. It's about people. Let me tell you something. When God's people collectively come together. Not, not, not individually, not based upon a name or not, denomination or non denomination or which is a denomination. He said, No, no, I ain't looking at that. He said, When my people that have my spirit cry out to me, he says, Then I'll do what? I, 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 will, I will respond. Verse 16 of Romans chapter 8 says, The spirit himself bears with this with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. You see it didn't say the flesh. You see it didn't say the color of my skin determines we're children of God. You see it didn't say where, I, where, where we worship at and this church and that body. That. You see it didn't say that, did it? It said that the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. Then this, then this, this is the good news. This is the good news. He said, and if children... Then we're heirs. Amen. He says, if children, then heirs. He says, heirs of God, he says, and joint heirs with what? With Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be what? Glorified together. There is no power on earth that can stand against the Spirit of God who dwells in the people of God, who protects the city of God. That bears his name. No matter what. Once again, this city that the psalmist is speaking of is the true church. The church that has the Spirit of God. For the Word of God says it's the Spirit of God that bears witness with what? My Spirit. That we are what? Children of God. I, I, I don't need man to tell me that. Man can't tell me that. Man can tell you that. But man can't tell me that according to the scriptures. Because the spirit of God that 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 God sealed within me once I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, that lives inside of me says, Look, we can connect. I know, I know you. I don't see it as the outward man. Pastor Mark, why are you doing that? Because we need to have some change falling in these times that we're in. God does not deal with the outward man. Or what the outward man says, the people of God are and should and how they should do that. God says, no, 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 no. He says, it's the spirit of God. And he says, it's important to know that you are a child of God. In these times, it's important to know that you have the spirit of God living within you, residing. It's important to know that. Why? Verse 6 says, nations are in uproar. Mm -hmm. Kingdoms are falling. But it says, He lifts His voice and the earth melts. In some version it says, The heathen raged. Mm -hmm. The heathen rage is speaking of the world gone mad. Are we there yet? 
The kingdoms being moved has to do with the ruins of this world being overthrown. Are we there yet? All of the turmoil that you can imagine in your heart is not as bad as this saying here. All the powers in the world are no comparison to God uttering his voice. Amen. The earth melts means that, that the power and the authority of God's voice settles all matters. Yes. Can I say that again? Yes. The earth melting just means that the power and the authority of the voice of God, what? Settles all matters. You ever had a conversation with someone? Let's call them a supervisor. And you express your displeasure about how things were operating in your place of business. Because they said they had an open door policy. And you thought that gave you the freedom to be able to say whatever you wanted to say. It's an open door. So I can come in the door and say whatever I want to say. But after you said what you had to say, and you were very passionate, as they say, about your, your stance. That's what they call now passionate. And after it was all over, the supervisor says, I understand what you're saying, but this is how I run my business. And what I have to say is final. God says, that's man. Because we all know that in this world, thank you, Holy Spirit, we always intend to find some loopholes against what man is saying. But there's no loophole when God speaks. When God speaks, it settles the matter. Haven't you noticed while you're studying the word of God, people of God, that in each instance when God spoke, something happened? That, that, that he just, his words just don't fall on deaf ears. So his word went out and accomplished that which it was sent out to do, and it did not come back unto him, what, void? God is no less powerful today than he was back then. He lifts his voice and the earth melts before him. It melts. You ever put something in a microwave and turn it up? Let's say butter. It don't take long for butter to melt, does it? You leave butter out of the sun, especially right now, it's about 102. I think they said it's going to get to 102 today. The butter's going to melt. But that's butter. But God says, guess what? When my word go forth, and when my vengeance come, when the wrath of God is experienced, he says, things are going to melt when I speak. The God of hosts, the God who fights on our behalf, is with us as a fortress. And all you have to do, people of God, is speak to win the battle. You, you, you know the scripture. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. I know, I know, I know, I know we just read it that, that I am what? I'm going to go back to this. I know we just read it that I'm hard pressed on every side. Yet not crushed. Um, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. But just wait for God, because when he speaks, it's going to settle the whole matter. Verse 7 says, The Lord Almighty is with us. That God of Jacob is our what? Fortress. In other words, God is our protector. And, and, and don't you know in order to have protection that that should let you know that there's some adversaries out there? That, 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 that everybody that's smiling in your face, <laughs> agreeing with your agenda, doing all these things for you that, that, that they're on your side. I just read early, we just read the word that the Spirit of God, what? Bear witness to our spirit that we are what? Children of God. He says, look, so I should know within the spirit of God to let me know that if this brother or sister is for me, I cannot base it upon the outward. Because the common man is very deceptive and deceiving. Don't you know people smile in your face before they put a knife in your back? He says here, but God is our fortress. He says, God is always with us, even though we at times cannot sense his presence. And, and, I, and I, I'm going to put a pen right there. He says, even though at times we can't sense his presence, and even when the world is telling you that God ain't real, 
even when the world is trying to get you to do things within your own strength, even when the world starts to entice you and make you believe that if it hadn't happened now, it, ain't, it didn't happen, even when we feel like that, God is still present, Amen. testing his people to see if they still have faith in him. There may be situations where we feel really close to him, yet in other occasions, it might seem that God is distant and uninvolved in our life. As believers, however, we can be certain that God is constant. He's a constant companion, whether we are aware of him or not. And this truth can empower and transform our lives as a people of God. We must remind ourselves of God's presence because, unfortunately, it's tempting to forget. Trials and tribulations and temptations and things that happen that come upon us kind of make us forget sometimes that God is with us. But God is saying this morning to the people of God that God is our refuge, our strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. And the more that we as the people of God remind ourselves, speak ourselves, speak to ourselves the promises of God and everything that's written in the word of God, we will become stronger. We'll understand that, guess what? God is able. And because of him, we will survive through every season of danger and every difficulty. Why? Because God is on our side. For in him is our what? Refuge. For in him is our what? Safe place. Verse 8 and 9 of Psalm 46 says, and I love this, I love this. Uh, the writer, because you, know, you, you have to put yourself in, into the writer. What the writer was saying, because you experience. He said, you know how we do when, when someone don't believe that, some, that you saw something and, and, and the remains are still there? Guess what you say? Well, come here, let me show you. So the psalmist is telling the people of God, come and see what the Lord has done. He says, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. The psalmist is telling the people of God, come see what God has already done. Can you think back over your life, over something that God has already done for you? And the same God that did it then is the same God that's able to do it right now. The same God that was your refuge and your strength, a very present help for you 10 days ago, is the same God that is your strength, your refuge, and a very present help today. Yes. But you have to believe that. Yes. And you have to speak that. Even when the enemy is oppressing me, even when the enemy is attacking me, even when my world seems so dark. I must speak God's word in faith that God is. Yes, now, don't you know that there's power in the word of God when the people of God speak by the spirit of God? Amen. God shows up. We read in the verse, previous verse how great the voice of God is, that he speaks, and guess what? Things happen. In this verses 8 through 9, it says that there will be no more weapons. <laughs> God destroys them all. There will be a time of peace such as the world has never known. So people of God, there's no need to fear for that, for that nothing that rises up against us can or will defeat us. And to prove his point, the psalmist calls us to do what? Look at God's work as proof. When you look back over your life, is there, is there proof that God has destroyed the hands of the enemy? Is there proof that he, had, he has made a way in your life? Is there proof in your life and the people of God that God can and will heal whomever he chooses to heal? Is there proof in your life that, that you are not even supposed to be right here, right now, Amen. based upon what you have done and who you are? Is it proof that God is sovereign? Yeah. Is it proof that God is full of grace and mercy? Are you proof of that? Yes. Then we need to tell the world, come and see right. what the Lord has done. He says that he brought desolations, he stopped wars, he's broken bowls and he shattered spears, and he burned chairs with fire. Come and behold the works of the Lord. It's coming, church. And God is saying, 
when my people say that? Remember, people of God, nothing and no one that rises up against us can or will defeat us. Nothing. So guess what God tells the people of God? He says, verse 10, so be still, y'all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know, I know. Just say out. He, he said, be still. Pastor Mark, what did he say? He said, put your weapons away. Stop, stop trying to fight things in your own strength. He said, look, you got to be still. Now, if I just showed you what I'm able to do, and if I press, he said, be still. Yeah, I, I, I'll let you know when I need you. Mm. But don't you know if I just speak the word, I'm going to bring about peace? Be still. He said, I know the world has weapons in their train. He said, we have more WMDs to destroy a whole nation. He said, let me tell you something. That ain't going to help. With evilness. That's not going to help you with the spirit of fear. Those man-made weapons are not going to do any good to this spiritual warfare that's going on. He said, People of God, be still. Stop, stop doing it your way. That's right. yeah. He said, be still and know that I am God. Then he says, I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. This, this means that we can trust God to do what's best. Yeah. And even in the midst of what we're going through, don't you know God knows best? Yeah. I, I know we know God knows best, but we kind of want God to do it up right now, don't we? That's right. But, but but you gotta realize God is not gonna allow the what creation yes, yes, yes. to tell the Creator right. when to move, how to move, and how fast to move. Amen. We just need to be reminded that what God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Yes. And God will take care of those whose hope and trust are in Him. Why? Because His name is invested in the lives of His people. God is going to take care of you. You know why? He said, because I've sealed you with the Holy Spirit of what? Promise. He says, I have made an investment in you. And he said, no matter how people are performing in the natural, my stocks ain't going to drop. Because my word is my bar. I know people are watching and looking at all these other things, think we're winning and we're really losing. He says, I have made an investment in you. A secure and complete invest, investment by the blood, with the blood of my only begotten son, Jesus Christ. He said, and not only that, but I've sealed you with the Holy Spirit of promise. Pastor Mark, what are you saying? They don't allow people to try to bring you off of your air. Don't, don't let people try to talk you out of your investment. Can I say it like that? Don't let people try to talk you out of your birthright. Can I put it Amen. plain like that? Don't let nobody tell you you broke when God says, I got everything for you. Amen. Matter of fact, he says like this. Not as those false prophets and teachers are saying. He says in the book of Ephesians that you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. All right. Not, not that you're going to be blessed. He said that you're already blessed. Amen. He said with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Okay, okay, I understand that, Pastor. <laughs> but when? And that's, that's, that's where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. God says that I will do all these things. He says, but will you wait on me? Yeah. Will you wait? Luke 18, 1 and 8 says it like this. Then he spoke a parable to them. That men always ought to what? Pray and not lose heart. Saying... Jesus speaking a parable to his disciples. There was, there was in a city a certain man, a judge, who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city. And she came to him saying, Get justice for me for my adversary. Do you hear it? And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, but because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Amen. And let turn, the king said, I don't fear God, nor regard man, but this woman is getting on my nerve. That's it. 
And because you give up my name, I'm going to give an answer because I want to get rid of it. Listen to me, people of God. Don't allow the world to give you trinkets yeah. and tricks and things that you make, make you believe that everything is settled. Be careful. That's not freedom. They only give you this because you're getting on their nerves. Hoping that you go away. People of God, stand on God's word. Continue to preach and teach God's word. Live God's word. Don't let nobody offer you something that, that's less than who you really are. Don't you know they're only giving it to you because you're getting on their nerves? The judge says, I don't fear God no with God man, but this woman is getting on my nerves. Look what Jesus says. Verse 6 says, Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him? So he does what? Bears long with them? Let me tell you some people of God, continue to cry out to our God. Continue to cry out. Because God says, look, I'm going to speak. He said, but don't stop crying out. I know people are telling you, well, if God is so real, how come he's not answered you yet? Don't you know our, our parents, our grandparents, our parents, parents, our parents, 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 that died in the faith, continued to cry and believe that God was able? And guess what? They fell asleep in the rest and the comfort and the power of God's word. Amen. And that's what they passed down to you. And they let you know about the life they live. Don't give up. You keep crying out to God for he will answer. But verse 8 says in Luke chapter 18, this is what he said, Jesus telling his disciples, I tell you that God will avenge him speedily. He said, but nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Have we allowed what is going on in this world to cause us to fall away from our faith? That's the question that God is asking his people. I know the world says shelter in place, but if you don't shelter in place, you need to shelter in a safe place. Amen. In God's holy place. Where there is peace and joy and love and safety and strength. For me to shelter in a place, a quote unquote safe place, and then leave out the safe place once in that my day, and I need to ask myself a question. Amen. Is God really in the place? Jesus is asking his disciples, people of God, he said, I know God is going to come, but, but, but when he decides to come, are, are y'all still going to be faithful to me? Will he still find faith? Will you still believe that God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in the time of trouble? Or are you going to conjure up some leaders and some teachers and some, 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 some people that are going to make you believe that they have the answer? You're going to conjure up some people. You know, are you going to be like, thank you, Holy Spirit, you're going to be like the, the Israelites? When Moses went to Mount Sinai, it took him a long time to come down when he was speaking to God, that, that the people of God said, look, let me tell you something. Let's make our own God. Let's worship our own God. It's taking Moses too long to come down. People of God, wait on God. Don't start making idols and worshiping these idols of the world to make you believe and to start worshiping them for they think that they have the answer because it's all temporal. Jesus is asking his disciples the same thing that he's asking us today. When I come back, will I find faith? Will you still believe in me or are you going to believe that freedom comes through you? Are you going to believe me or are you going to believe that justice comes through you? Because when I do it, I'm going to get the glory. But when you do it, you don't give it to me. Don't be like the world. He's telling the people of God today. So the children of God, we should know and believe that Jesus Christ is he's coming back. He's coming back from his church. The true church. Yes. And when Jesus comes back, every wrong is going to be made right. Yes. But we have to endure. Our corruptible will be will put on incorruption. And this mortal shall put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass this saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. So whatever hurt, people of God. Whatever injustice, people of God. Whatever oppression, persecution, and whatever poverty we experience in this life will pale in comparison to what is coming. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18 says it like this. Therefore, we do not lose heart. You see what it says again? Got to hold on. 
He said, therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by what? Day. Look what he says. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. The psalmist had it in Psalm 46, was already speaking about the coming of Christ and what God was going to do. So Psalm 46, 1 through 10 is just a, a, a godly reminder. Can I say that? It's, it's a godly reminder to what God commands us to do while we wait. Not just wait haphazardly, but wait on him. He says here, be still. And can I say it like this, Sister Denise? Stop taking matters into your own hands. Be still. Be still. Stop trying to figure out. Stop having all these meetings on how you're going to try to make something happen. He says, my people are going to trust in me. If I, the God that created the heavens and the earth, the Spirit of God speaks to the people of God, whatever leader, leader that I decide to raise up in this time, hear ye him. And you'll know because your spirit is going to bear witness. Because he's going to speak and teach and walk and live in what? The unfathomable word of God. And not only the word, they're going to come with power. So he says, don't strive in anxiety and fear, people of God. Instead, know and recognize that God, our God, is in control. Even when everything is out of control. And when, not if, we find ourselves worrying and doubting and fearful of what we see in the world, because it happens to us, it is natural. The psalmist is telling us that we all need to run, not walk, to our safe place, which is found in him. He said, run, not walk. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10 says it like this. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. You know he didn't say they walked to it, did they? He, he, he said that they, they ran to the safe place. And in the midst of all the things that are happening in our lives, we learned about this in, in, in Sunday school this morning, and I pray, I wish I had the notes, but, I, but, but, but the superintendent preached a powerful word. She said, who are you running to in times of chaos and confusion? Or what are you running to? Some of us are running to our jobs to find comfort in it. Some of us run into the stocks, and some of us are running to all these other things. Some of us are running to, to chemical dependencies. Some of us are running to women and men. Some of us are running to all kinds of things, but the people of God need to run to God. And the good news about this is that God doesn't discriminate. God says, my hands are wide open, and I'm ready to receive all those who desire to run to me. I told you, I don't judge like the man judges. I don't look at the outward. I look at your heart. And I know that you need me. But you are allowing the enemy and the evilness of this world to keep you from coming to me. My word is not going to change. Matthew 11, 28 and 30 says it clearly. Come to me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle, lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And that's what God is saying today to the people of God. And the people that desire to be the people of God, the true children of God. He says, come unto me, all of you that are weary and heavy laden. We, we said earlier that, guess what? The trials and the storms of life don't discriminate. For it falls upon the just as well as the unjust. It rains upon the just as well as the unjust. But guess what else rains upon the just and the unjust? God's mercy, God's grace, and most importantly, the love of God. 
For John 3, 16 and 18 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall, what? Not perish, but will have everlasting life. For the word of God says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. The God that I serve and the God that I know and the Spirit of God that lives within me does not have within the Spirit of God and the children of God a condemning message. But it's a warning. For God is coming back. And today could be your first day in to the spiritual safe place. And I thank God for this safe place, Brother Deacon, because this safe place don't close. Amen. Amen. And this safe place is has three people on God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And they never sleep nor slumber. You can come to this same place no matter where you are. Whether you're holding a gun in your hand or alcohol to your lips. God said, if you just try to run it now and come to the same place. He said, because I know that the Comforter is speaking to you right now. And the good thing about this same place is that he says, when you come, it's your choice now. When you come to me, the blood of my only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, washes away all of those sins, past, present, and future. I hear the unbeliever say, I don't believe that. He says, I know because you don't realize that God is a refuge, my strength, a very present help. He said, you don't know, but if you come to know me, you'll realize that I am. That I'm able to do all things but fail. So people of God, as we close this morning, remember that, 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 that hope is found where? In the safe place. And in the safe place, we go into the rooms and we realize that God is our what? Refuge. Our strength. Our very what? Present help in a time of trouble. And if this is your day, I'm asking, do you want to come in a safe place? It don't matter if you're short, tall, got long hair, ball, fat, skinny, no matter what sin you've done, no matter what you've done, no matter, no matter what you've done. He said, look, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't check people out from the hour. I look at the heart. He said, and once I bring you in, once you receive me by faith, then guess what I'll do? I'll give you that living water, that river that he talked about in Psalms. And guess what it's going to do? It's going to remind you. It's going to clean you up. He says that once you're clean, you're clean. Now, now, now remember, when life, because life gets dirty, don't it? When, when, when dirt, when dirt starts trying to come upon you, you got to realize one thing. you got to know who you are. So come on back to the safe place. And let me do what? Clean you up. I'm able to do it if you have faith in me. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, and we thank you for your word today. You are so worthy of all praise. Thank you for reminding us, Lord God, your people, that you are our refuge, that you are our strength, that you are a very present help in a time of trouble. You also reminded us, Lord God, in verse 10 of Psalms 46, to be still. Yes, Jesus. In other words, let's stop taking matters into our own hands. We know that's how the world works and how the world operates, but we're not of the world. You told us, Lord God, that we may be in the world, but we're not of the world. You remind us, Lord God, that we should go and look back at what you've done in the past. And, and the same God that did those things for us in, in the past is the same God that's able to move, but when we wait on him, when we wait, and we allow the world to talk us out of our right. Talk, of out of, talk us out of our refuge. Talk us out of our protection. No, Father God, not I. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. For we know that what is happening right now is only a light affliction. But what is coming is greater. Amen. But I pray, Lord God, for your people that you would, Father God, remind them of the strength that they have. You've already given us everything that we need. We know the worldly weapons, the worldly weapons are guns and knives and bullets and, and all these other things, but the spiritual weapon is the whole arm of God. That you already, Father God, given to us, Lord God, remind us right now that we should always wear it. That belt of truth 
shows us what God sees and knows about the matter. The breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, our, our feet shot it with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the gospel of peace. Not only peace to those that hear it, but peace to me, Father God, in the midst of the warfare. And the helmet of salvation that protects my mind from the enemy of, from the enemies. To protect my mind from all the accusations. I don't need any man to free me for the word of God says, whom the Son has set free is already free indeed. So keep your false freedom. And you told me I have the power to pray. And that is a weapon that God is speaking unto the people of God right now. Use the weapons that I've given to you. And after you've done all of those things, he said, stand. Stand knowing that what? God is in control. And for those that do not know you and have not received you as their Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord God, that the Spirit of God is convicting them right now and all they have to do is say, Father God, I believe. Not only in you, but I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son. And that you sent him here to die on the cross for my sins. And not only to die, Lord God, but you gave him power, Father God, that he rose from the dead with all power. I believe, Father God, that he is sitting on the right hand of you interceding on our behalf. I believe right now that your spirit, the Holy Spirit, is speaking unto me, telling me right now, convicting me to confess my sins. Though they may be red as crimson, in the same place you will make them white as snow. And that no person, no institution, no nation can bring me back to that because you said that I am secured in your hand. And you use the man of God to remind me that I don't have to fight alone, that you've given me weapons to fight every spiritual battle, to take every thought captive by the obedience of Christ Jesus. So, Father God, I thank you for what you've done through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. I believe, I receive. And, Father God, I thank you for the soul that has said yes to your word. Now, God, I pray that you would lead them, Lord God, by your Holy Spirit. I'm asking, I know you will, to a safe place that is not only preaching your word, not only teaching your word, <coughs> But living your word. But living your word. But living your word also that your power confirms what the word of God is being spoken. I pray for the leaders of this nation. Your leaders. The men and women of God that you have called. That they will go into their closet and repent for the heresies that they have been Spilling out to your people. Remind them, Lord God, that they will be held accountable. This is not about me. This is all about you. Let them know, Father God, convict them right now that they should repent and do their first works over. And that is to love you, Father God, with all their heart, their mind, their soul, and their strength, and to love their neighbors as themselves. We thank you for this word today. We thank you for the freedom that's bought and received by receiving your word. And we thank you for the love. And we thank you for reminding us, Lord God, that you are a refuge and you are our strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus Christ. And thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God.